buffering is a spatial operation that can really only be done if effectively in GIS. With buffering, um, it's typically done with vector data, and we can start with either a point line or polygon, represented by the black areas on the bottom. And then what we do is we just draw the, the boundary of another polygon a certain distance away from those features. So that we can see in the, um, in the top one there with the points, it's just sort of like taking a compass and, uh, and making a circle after putting the um, sharp end of the compass in any of those points. With the line, we're kind of tracing parallel lines around the edges of those lines. And at the edge of those lines, it's gonna have a very rounded end. And where lines overlap, depending on what our buffer distance is, the entire area might be filled in. In the bottom with areas, once again, things are gonna look um, rounded. We're never gonna get sharp edges on a buffer because it's just gonna use that kind of corner of the polygon as where the compass is drawing part of a circle up here and it's always going to look um, rounded in that way. Um, when we draw a buffer, all of the buffers on our map can have the same width. That would be a constant width buffer. Or we might vary the width of the buffer based on some feature or some attribute in the attribute table that we want to um, use as the basis for our buffer. And that would make a variable width buffer as, as is shown on the right there. Um, here's an example of a variable width buffer. We can see that there's definitely two different buffer distances. One here for some of the streams which is fairly narrow, and then the mainstreams here are getting a much wider buffer associated with them. So we have an input feature. We buffer that by a particular distance, and then we get a new layer that's output from this, which is the buffer layer. So we actually create a new GIS layer when we do buffering that's always going to be a polygon layer, and it's always going to show um, these kind of rounded buffers around some sort of feature. So once again, if we start with points, we're gonna get mostly circles or things that look like overlapping circles, but in this case, the, uh, the central part is dissolved out. If we start with lines, we're also gonna get the kind of these kind of elongate shaped polygons. And if we start with polygons, we're gonna get bigger, bigger, more rounded polygons. Um, in this case here, because poly buffers are often used to describe something within a certain distance or something else, um, in this case here, the, um, the polygons themselves are um, included in the buffer. Other times a little empty area like a donut is left in the middle and that's when the polygon would not be included. If you wanted to know um, where a certain distance from a polygon was but you did not want to include the polygon itself. So if we start with the point layer and we do buffering, the default is to get buffers that look like this. If they're far enough away from each other, they're circles. Here they would be overlapping circles, but all one polygon area that, that is traced out like this. However, we could, um, and this is what we're basically doing is doing buffering and then dissolving all of the output buffers in order to make nice um, contiguous areas here. We don't have to do that though. We could um, identify all the overlaps. So in this case here, let's look at this simple example here between this point here and this point here, we might want to know what area is within that buffer distance from both of those features, this area number two here. So if we want to, when we do buffering, we can, we can preserve that information. Another thing we can do when we buffer is we can make nested buffers. So maybe we want to know in this case, um, what area is 10 meters away and what area is 20 meters away and what area is 30 meters away and what area is 40 meters away. So here we would get four overlapping polygons and, um, and the, that was sometimes called a nested buffer or um, buffer in GIS. So here we can see the same thing. Here the in interior of these circles has been dissolved and, uh, and the interior of these lines has been dissolved. The interior of these polygons has been dissolved. Here they're preserved so that we can see where the, where the area of overlap is. This is the most typical one to use for buffers, but sometimes we do want to preserve that information and find out where the overlap is. And once again, in order to make these buffers, we're keeping the distance from the line constant. And then around each of the places where the direction of the line changes, we can think of that as a circle. And then we're just taking this outer envelope or a tangent line around all of these things in order to, um, in order to create the buffer in this case for this line. Here's an example of a variable width buffer. And we can see the place that it's getting the variable width from is some column in the attribute table. In this case, the attribute is called 
buff distance. And we can see that that varies from 100 for the Mississippi to uh, 75 for some of these other rivers, and then down to 50 for the, um, the Arkansas and Missouri River. And then we can clearly see on the map there's three different buffer distances. The, the widest one here of 100, the next one here of 75, and the narrowest one over here of 50. We can also do buffering with raster data. With raster data, once again, we just define a buffer distance. Um, we start with some input features, which are just going to be some of the grid cells. The buffer distance is going to be related to the size of the grid cell. And then we'll get an output buffer that looks something like here. And of course, this is just going to be based on the distance each of the grid cells is away. And then, um, and then having some sort of cutoff. So for in, in this example here, the, um, the buffer distance is equal to 15 units. So this one, this one, and this one would be included. This one would be included, but um, 20, all these 20s, all these numbers in the 20s would not be included. So it has to be less than 15 in order to be colored black as part of the buffer. And um, this may or may not include the original area that was defined by these, um, by these grid cells.